Today's episode is sponsored by Spartan Chemical Company. Family owned and operated since 1956, Spartan Chemical is a leading manufacturer of superior and cost-effective specialty chemical products sold through select trusted distributors. Spartan Chemical makes clean simple. For more information, please visit spartanchemical.com. If you are watching this interview and either own or manage a cleaning or restoration company, the next few minutes are critical to your online marketing strategy, especially as we end this year and start a new one. Our focus today is on search engine optimization for small businesses and some big trends to have on our radar. And to dig into this, I welcome Dean Mercado, the CEO of Online Marketing Muscle, specializing in digital marketing coaching. Dean? Pleasure to have you back again. Hey, Jeff. I'm so glad to be with you, man. That's a good topic to get into. I know I'm confused about SEO myself. In fact, Dean, I've heard some say SEO may be dead. And (laughs) maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. Why don't you tell us about that and your strategies you'd like to share today? Sure. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Let me preface it by... First saying, I've been in this industry quite a bit, quite a long time. My company, Online Marketing Muscle, has been around since 2004. I've seen SEO born, and I've seen it morph and evolve over several decades now. So to answer the question that's on Jeff's, on your mind, Jeff, and it's probably on a lot of people's mind, is SEO dead? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now, maybe SEO, the way you might have thought about it 10, 15 years ago, might be kind of dead. However, the Googles of the world will always be evolving that. That's a moneymaker. As long as there's money to be made, there's going to be a business there. And there's a lot of money to be made about how to enable people to find content easily on the Internet. Now, Let's also preface this by saying, you know, there's probably over 600 million blogs out there on the Internet. So you've got to find a way somehow to be found. And this is where search engine optimization really comes into play. So 2024 is going to be a little bit different than previous years. However, keep in mind that the more that things change, the more they stay the same. Right. They put fancy names to them. To kind of intimidate and scare you a little bit. And some of that's being propagated by the uh, the SEO industry itself because we like you to think that we're cooler than we really are. The bottom line is there are a couple of principles that I'd like you to consider adding into your strategy and your planning coming up into this new year. And the first one, the first big one that I would say is AI. You need to understand how this new cool kid on the block affects SEO from every single angle possible. I want you to think of AI being like that cool kid on the playground that has all the answers to everything. Well, that's AI. The way people are accessing the the internet now and finding and searching for what they want is a little different, right? So we have things like uh, chatbots now on the internet where even if you just go to Google and you just Google something, the first result that you see at the time of this recording here is going to be a generative AI response from Google's AI machine, not really crediting anybody on that result. So you're going to see some things like that. And this is going to evolve. There will be lawsuits. There will be all kinds of stuff because 
They're putting, they're using people's information and content without their permission in certain instances. But once you put it public on the internet, the argument's always going to be, hey, it's public. So uh, the AI bots can use it. That will change and morph in 2024 and beyond as well. You're starting to see other search engines like Bing giving a lot of uh, footnoting credits to people. So they'll give you a little response and then they'll, they'll give you the footnote on where you can, the source of the, where they got the information from. So how people find information will change a little bit. Also understand that if you're optimizing content for the, in, for the internet these days, um, the AI tools that are popping out every single day now, everything from tools that'll help you create, understand what kind of content you should create to creating that content for you, to optimizing that content, to editing that content, to everything you can think about what you want to do with that content. There's AI tools out there that have changed everything. You need imagery for your blog posts. There's AI tools that will generate those for you. Completely unique imagery. So there's, there's, so much possibility and it's going to play heavily into 2024 as the big boys out there, the big boys, the big girls, the big players out there, they're leveraging this stuff. They've been already for probably more than a year, two years, maybe longer. You just didn't know about it. Us small guys down here, we just didn't know about it. They had access to things before we did. So we're starting to see that. And as I go further on through these next couple of points, I'm going to AI will be, you know, kind of, It'll weave its way through all of it. So just understand that AI is going to play a huge role. You've got to learn how to navigate that. If you're not sure how to navigate that, whoever you work with in terms of your SEO, you better make sure they know how to navigate it. Now, remember, the tips I give you, I'm not trying to turn you, per se, into an SEO guru. That would take a lot more time than a few minutes Jeff and I are going to spend here for any of us to teach anybody to be a guru. But you need to know enough about it to manage it to manage somebody else doing it, to be able to navigate it so it doesn't hurt your business, right? And you can actually help your business. So the second big point I wanted to bring up is an acronym. And it's been floated around by Google and others for probably for a couple of years, and it's called EAT, E-A-T, right? So that stands for something like, I think it's expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. Now I'm going to add into that a little bit more. And, and I'm going to add another E to that, and that's experience. So this EAT acronym, um, it is all about really, truly understanding uh, how to position yourself and your brand as the, the go-to, the authority, the, the one that everybody thinks of when they're thinking about what it is you do. Right. So if you're in a, a, a local type business and all of you listen to this, at least most of you, uh, whether you're a cleaning company or a restoration type company, you deal a lot with local audiences. They need to be thinking about your company. So this EAT acronym has a lot to do with branding and your brand strength online. If you do not have a strategy on how to improve your brand strength, you should talk to somebody. And figure that out because it's going to affect you in so many different ways. But Google is going to look to those with authority to determine whose content are they going to rank when somebody searches for what you do. If you don't see yourself coming up toward the top, there's something wrong. Likely, it starts with you not meeting that EAT acronym, right? So in other words, your brand strength isn't strong enough. Now, I said earlier, the more that things change, the more they stay the same. We've known this for decades now. We've been doing this in your industries for decades. We know that the brand strength drives everything. Again, I told you, they're going to come up with new cool ways of saying it. You got to build that strong online presence. So that EAT acronym is really important. The experience piece we added to it, it is about the user experience. Your website needs to be safe. It needs to be easy to navigate. All of those are playing into whether or not Google's going to see you as a credible authority. If your website's garbage and it's not a safe place for visitors, the security on it is lapsed, that's going to be problematic for you. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull from your ability to rank, right? And the third big point that I'd like to make, and this one really delves more into what should be common sense to most people, but 
sometimes common sense is not so common, right? And that's unfortunate for many of us. And this is what we call helpful content, helpful content. And this is a, an algorithm Google came up with probably in late August, 2022, the, the first iteration of the helpful content uh, algorithm. In September of this year, 2023, they just came out with a new update to that. And it looks like they're going to run with this for a while. Helpful content is all about you putting out content that matters. Stop putting junk on the internet. 15 years ago, 20 years ago, yeah, there wasn't very much content on the internet. So the more the merrier. Today, it's about what I call the fewer better. The fewer better. You don't need 5,000 blog posts, right? If you have five that are great that you keep updating regularly and making sure that they're doing their job and they're actually helping people, you might be better off. So Google's, the Bing's, all of these big guys out there looking for us to provide content that tells them that not only are we the authority that we're the go-to, but that we're putting out content that really looks like it's intended to help somebody, to help our target audience. So lots of FAQs, um, going after and answering and addressing people's pain points, right? That's what Google's looking for. That should be common sense to you, right? If if somebody calls you on the phone and says, hey, I, you know, I have a flood in my basement and you start going off on this tangent, you know, about all this other stuff that really doesn't matter to that person, they're hanging up. That's what Google's doing to you now. And along with these last two points in particular, you've got to prune the content off your website that isn't doing anything. So in other words, thin the herd, get rid of the junk. It's like looking at the landscape at your home, around your home, and you got all of these bushes and stuff that are all unruly and just overgrown. You got to trim it so that people could see the beautiful pieces that you have there, right? Same goes with your website. Prune it down, focus on the fewer better, but really focus in on content that's intended to help your target audience. You need to prove to Google that you know who your target is and that your intentions are to really help them. If you can do that, you're well on your way to, to beat most people you know, when it comes to search results, because most out there, they're not doing this stuff. And as many times as they've heard this, they're still not doing it. So I'm telling you that the opportunity in 2024 is huge for you. You can leapfrog a lot of your competition by just playing the game a little bit smarter. Stop going through the clutter. Look for better, faster ways of doing things, better, faster, cheaper. And there are. Right. But make sure whoever is doing this for you knows this stuff and they know how to navigate it and you know how to get you the result you're ultimately looking for. So hopefully that gives you a little something. Right, Jeff. So we're, we're certainly not dead in the SEO world. But again, it does seem like some of this should be common sense. Right. However, you know, um, I understand that to many, you got a lot of other things on your mind. Maybe it's not so common sense. You know, but for those of us who play in this stuff and have, you know, I've been neck deep in it for, for a decade. So, yeah, I get it. It could seem easy to me. So hopefully yeah. this helps a little bit. It helps a lot. So, some that I've heard about SEO not working for them or being dead, maybe it's frustration. Yes. They're losing, oh, yes. losing the SEO game. And so they're turning to direct mail or knocking on doors or some other form of I marketing. So. But your points are good. AI tools, EAT as an acronym. I'm going to have to look into that more. And helpful right. content. I think that's yes. good stuff. But let me ask you this, Dean. Are you sitting down? Yes, I am. Okay. Go for it. What's all this cost? Who it can depends. Do yeah. If you get smart about it and you really do focus on the fewer better, you're not talking thousands and thousands of dollars a month, right? If you have an unruly website, that's been just, you've been in business 10 years and it's been just building clutter over all this time. Think about if you're a cleaning company and you step into somebody who hasn't cleaned their house in 10 years, what do you, what do you think it's going to cost? Hmm. Yeah. It's going to cost you a little bit more if it's been neglected, if things are overgrown, right? So cutting the fat, you know, you, every company should invest in SEO period. I don't care what you do. You really should. Even if that's a couple of hundred dollars a month, you should be investing in something. You should have some eyeballs 
on your website that's moving it in a direction that's going to help you. So, yeah, you should be budgeting a couple of hundred dollars to, you know, maybe in the beginning, a few thousand dollars to get some things back in order. It's like bring in the big deep clean and then, OK, then it's a maintenance program after that. So, again, it's it's about figuring out what you need and, you know, ties into a little bit of a joke where it's like you got two friends camping in the woods. Right. And all of a sudden, one of them uh, has this they take their shoes off and they're sitting down and all of a sudden they look in the distance and they see a bear. And that bear looks at them and that bear's starting to move towards them. And their friend's like, oh, boy, we, we got to get out of here. Get up, let's go. Let's go. And like, what are you doing? Why? And he's taking his time putting his shoes on. His friend's like, what are you doing? Let's go. We got to get out of here. And he's like, uh, you know, I don't need to outrun the bear. All I need to do is outrun you. Right. <laughs> and that's the bottom line. You don't need to outrun the bear out there. You just need to outrun your competitors. If you could put out content and clean up your your site and your act around your online presence a little bit better than your competition, your local competition, which is highly possible, by the way, for many of you, um, you will win this game, right? You don't have to beat the biggest commercial cleaning company out there. You've got to find the, the keywords that you need and you could rank for, for what your audience is searching for, and you can win this game. So it is about being very strategic, but focus on the fewer better and you have a better chance at winning. By the way, folks, I'm going to be at the big ISSA show coming up in Vegas, coming up in here in November. So while I'm there, pick my brain, ask the questions. You got any question about SEO, marketing, or anything like that? Every, I'm there to give it all away for free. Come talk to me. You know, don't be afraid. Don't, you know, nobody's looking to sell you anything. If I can help you, find me. Let me help you. All right.